Hi guys, this is Introducing Emmy, and we're here to do a sound effects tutorial. And by we, I mean you and me. So for this tutorial, uh, the tools you're going to need are Photoshop, which is what I'm using right now. I'm using CS6, but you can use whatever Photoshop you want. And you can use whatever drawing program you want, as long as you can translate my directions into your program, like Sci, Open Canvas. Yeah, you got the deal. The other tool I'm using is Lazy Nozumi, which is a line smoothing and line correction tool. And you can get that from LazyNozumi.com. You don't have to use it, but it's a big help to keep your fonts looking nice and clean. And the other thing I'm using is a tablet. I'm using a Wacom Intuos something or other, an S, I think, a small. It doesn't really matter, but again, this is for digital art, so a tablet is highly recommended. Uh, and then the other resources I recommend are writtensound.com, which is sort of like a Wikipedia of sound effects. And they tell you uh, like where the sound effects were used and uh, how they're written and other common types of sound effects for the same thing you're looking for. So if you're looking for like a kick sound effect, which is the sound effect example I'm going to use, then it will list every type of kick sound effect. And I also recommend UrbanDictionary.com just to cross-reference your sound effects to make sure that your imagined nonsense word is not actually like a slur or something weird or embarrassing. Um, so yeah, those are the two I recommend. So here is the sketch, a really, really rough sketch of the sound effect that I'm going to be using which is Bok, B-O-K. Um, actually, I might do B-A-K. Well, whichever. Now, uh, I, I am doing a hand-drawn sound effect, not a, um, not a font. Uh, I normally, well, I should say I used to use fonts, but I don't any longer, mostly because I don't want to have to trace where those fonts come from. And usually I can't even find something that I'm looking for, like something that's close to what I'm going for. So I prefer to just draw them myself. I think it looks more artistic. See, now this I don't like. This is too skinny for me to work with. That would be good for like a, a crack sound effect though. So I recommend just keeping very loose with your writing. Now if you don't have good handwriting, that's okay. Sound effects don't have to look perfect and amazing. Uh, so one of the things I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to in my brush menu, which you can find this, I think, under a window. Yes. And in CS6, you can bring that up with F5. I did not know that. So I'm going to control the angle with my pen direction. I'm also going to set my minimum diameter to about 70. And that will be controlled with the pen pressure. That's fine. So let's try... this. Back. Maybe it should be more like black. Black was one I saw online, but I didn't know if I really wanted to use it. Okay. So the biggest thing you're going to notice is I'm going off my canvas. That's okay. We will fix it. So there we go. There's our sound effect, and it does not fit in the place that we're going to need it. But again, that is okay. So what uh, we're going to do here is we're just going to do a little bit of cleanup. Now, I should mention I am not a font expert. I am not a graphic designer. I can only show you what I think is visually appealing for me. So here, all I'm doing is I'm just kind of giving these some nice points, 
some tapers, but I'm using the same angle of taper at the tops and bottoms of the letter, meaning that I'm coming in, what is that, about a 45 degree angle, something like that, it's probably a little tighter actually, but I'm coming inwards to the letter. I'm striking towards the interior and I'm trying to keep these edges looking pretty smooth. It doesn't, like I said, it doesn't need to be like a printer. You know, it doesn't need to be like a real font, I guess. Now, the only uh, small issue I have is the B. The B is like a really round letter, and I don't want it to look fat or out of place. I want it to still have like a little bit of a vertical edge to it. Alrighty, so... This looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and uh, paint bucket in these letters so that they are no longer uh, aliased or yes, aliased, anti-aliased. Oh God. <laughs> Here we go. I can never tell the difference between alias and anti-alias. But you want these lines to not be terribly soft. You want them to have sort of like a hard edge. And now I'm just selecting each individual letter and positioning them so that they're about an equal distance from each other. The B is just a touch close. So because I was using uh, a calligraphic brush, I hope that's the word, you'll see I have a few little rough edges here and there just from the way that the brush angles itself, but we're going to fix that. It's no big deal. Now, right now, the B is floating. The B is, or er, the B, <laughs> the sound effect is floating. So it's on its own layer and I can draw behind it. What I want to do is I want to put a layer of white just below it. So here's my layer of white. And I want to go back to the sound effect and hit Control E and collapse them down. Don't panic. So now I am drawing in uh, pink underneath and you can't see it because this white is actually touching this black. Okay. So now we're going to absolutely destroy this. <laughs> we're going to set our two colors back to black and white. Now forgive me. I always forget which one needs to be at the front, but it's not really a big deal when you work with black and white. Okay. So black needs to be at the front. That's fine. So we're going to go to our stamp tool and we're going to set our smoothness. I'll just make this a little smaller here. Uh, you want to set your smoothness to one for now. And then we're going to adjust the light and the dark balance. And our goal here is to find an edge that we can live with. What we're trying to do is sort of smooth the edges out here. Now I don't like to set the, the actual smoothness any higher the one because what you'll see is it starts to like dampen the edges like the white um, comes into the sides of the letter and they get smaller there so I set the smoothness at one and then what I do is I just kind of fidget around with it till I see what I want and now this is a light dark balance of three two I think two is actually fine yeah let's go with that so now this is um the corrected edges as compared to before. It's just slightly bolder, uh, a little cleaner, you know, it filled in some of the gaps right there. It's not perfect, but it, you know, it gets the job done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come in nice and close. Now this is a step I think a lot of people would just be like, nope, and avoid, but I have to have everything perfect and shiny and wonderful. So I like to come in and I'm using the pencil tool to just fill in some of these edges. Make some of the points a little stronger and I'm just using um, control to bring up the eyedropper tool briefly to select between white and black. So you can see I have a few little edges that need fixing. I would like the top of the A to be 
pointed. And you can see how helpful Lazy Nozumi is here, coming in and cleaning up the lines right behind me. No biggie. So I'm thinking that looks okay. Or at least as good as it needs to be. Eh, it might be like a little too angly right there. I, I keep an eye on my uh, navigation window to make sure that stuff isn't too too weird looking. <laughs> so that it looks good far away. You know, if you've ever taken an art class and then you say, step back from your canvas, my navigation window is my version of stepping back from the canvas. So, yeah, I think that'll do it. There's a few little, eh, like points and whatnot that could be the most perfect little points in the world, but we're not going to get too nutty about that. Okay. All right. So let me um, show you what we're going to do now. So we're going to take our magic wand tool and we're going to unselect anti-alias and we're going to unselect contiguous and sample all layers unselected. Tolerance can be whatever you want, but I usually keep it between 10 and 20. It doesn't really matter here because tolerance is only affected when your work is anti-aliased, but right now we are aliased. So that means that there is no soft line, that this is a solid black, a solid pixely black, and this is a solid pixely white. So we are going to select a white area and having contiguous unselected, means that it will look for white anywhere in here and select all of it. So once all your white selected, just hit delete and blammo, you have a nice, clean, beautified sound effect. And it only took us like, what, 10 minutes. <laughs> You'll go a little quicker once you get the hang of it. So I actually just want to make it a little skinnier, a little smaller here. Maybe something like that. So what I do is I hit control T to uh, bring up the uh, transform tool around the sound effect and by holding down control you can pull these points and kind of angle readjust so I want something sort of like this Maybe just a touch smaller All right, I think that'll do it. So uh, this is this sketch is part of a larger uh, page that I'm working on, and this blue right here is a text balloon from a previous panel. I don't want my sound effect to overlap or underlap it too much. Um, this is okay. I'll have to double check it on the final file to make sure it's fine, but I am sort of like a stickler about sound effects not crossing into other panels too much because it can kind of throw off the reading order of the panels and some other things. It's kind of getting into comic theory there a little bit, but we're just worried about making the sound effects. So now that we have this nice um, black, I'm actually going to unselect contiguous on my paint bucket tool so that it will color everything black. And I'm just going to fill this with black one more time. All that does is just kind of solid it back up a little bit, makes it aliased again because when you start transforming and warping it around it can uh, re-alias it's re-anti-alias itself where the lines will get soft again because you've warped it too much uh you know i'm kind of lazy about <laughs> resizing my sound effects so they get pretty chewed up while i'm working on them because i keep transforming and changing all that so uh I also don't really want to change the base color of this. I just want to leave it a black uh, font, or excuse me, a black color on top of my letter. So most of how I adjust my sound effects visuals is through the effects and layer styling window. So double click on the sound effect layer. And uh, first we can do all kinds of stuff here. Let's do a color overlay. Uh, and the color overlay, we'll just do like a bright orange that hurts my eyes. And then let's go to stroke. And this is just sort of personal preference to put an outline around it. Uh, 
let's do like a red. Like a dark red. That looks nice. Yeah. I think that'll be good. Yeah. Dark red. And then uh, let's do a gradient. Uh, this may not appear because it's underneath the color overlay. So we'll just do a normal... Uh, a normal gradient, black to white, we'll leave it at that for now, and then go to your color overlay and hit overlay. I don't like the way that looks. I'm pretty uh, loosey-goosey with how I do these, I just sort of pick stuff that looks good. So now I've set my color layer to a color dodge. Gradient overlay, uh, let's adjust this so that the... I like to have the colors radiating from the bottom of the letter to the top of the letter. So before it was like this, so the red was radiating from the K up to the B. I kind of prefer this. I think it makes it look more like an action, you know, like it sort of radiates away from what's going on here. Um, again, it's kind of a personal preference thing. You don't have to do it like this, but yeah. So then we're going to go to Inner Glow. This is sort of an aside thing. I don't always do it. Set your inner glow to overlay and then select the the whatever color is picked and make sure it's like a really bright white. I notice sometimes CS6 likes to likes to default to a uh, kind of a light yellow or gray. I'm not sure why. I, I don't know how to change it, but yeah. So we're gonna put our choke to 100 and then you just adjust the size of that interior line. I feel like this just gives it like an extra little kick. I think I'm going to set it to a 7 for now. And I should mention real quick under the stroke tool, or excuse me, the stroke style, that uh, right now the line is positioned to the outside, but you can also do inside or center. And this changes the sharpness of the letter itself. Uh, again, you know, this is something that is sort of personal preference. I like the way my letters look on the outside. So I don't mind the line sitting right at the edge. And uh, I think that's pretty much going to do it for that. So now what you can see is that our sound effect is now has a, a bunch of layer styles applied to it. Stroke, inner glow, color overlay, and gradient overlay. And these I'm fairly certain are in order of how they appear. So stroke is on top, then it's the inner glow, then it's the color overlay, and then it's the gradient overlay. I kind of wish color overlay was adjustable. Like I wish you could take this and like drag it down here because my color overlay is almost always something that I want at the bottom, but I don't know how to do that. So <laughs> I don't know if you can actually in CS6. So it is where it is. Uh, so now the only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my magic wand, select contiguous, so now it will only select individual occurrences of black. Because remember, when you turn off the effects, it's still black letters underneath. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust it a teeny tiny bit more. Oops. This K is a little close, and you can see that there's some... Uh, little artifacts left behind. I'm just going to adjust this so that the K, the angle of the K, is kind of set nicely against this letter. Now remember, nothing is set in stone. You can always edit stuff, change stuff, no big deal. Maybe I'll set the A a little lower. Does that look... Yeah, I kind of like that. And then we'll take the W. Adjust the angle slightly. Now the way that I'm bringing up that transform tool, once something's selected, just hit Control T and it will only transform the selected area. Sorry if some of this is a little bit like Photoshop 101, but I just want to make sure I'm being clear on everything. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will try to adjust or address them the best that I can. So I'm going to come in a little close here and just with the eraser quickly go in and get rid of some of these little artifacts left over from our adjustments. 
Okay, last but not least, and this is kind of uh, if you wanna, sort of a sort of a thing here. So what you're gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my regular brushes. I'm just gonna reset them, which is fine. Uh, and look for something that's tapered. I think that's okay. This is not the normal brush that I use, but it's fine. So I'm gonna select this red color that I picked. I'm gonna turn off the sketch layer for now so this is uh, clear. I am not a big fan, especially with a sound effect like this where I want it to be like really angular and sharp. I'm not a big fan of these uh, rounded curves that the stroke tool does, and I haven't found a great way to counter that. So what I like to do is I like to make a new layer. We'll just call this correction. <laughs> I like to make a new layer and come in and sort of artistically give some flair to my sound effects. Now I realize that the that the stroke uh, is aliased. See how that's like a softer line? It might be a little hard to tell in the video, but or excuse me, it's anti-alias. Oh, oh my gosh, I need to like get my head straight here. <laughs> so this is an anti-alias line and this is alias. See how hard that is, but this is soft. Stroke tool just kind of works out like that. But what I'm doing here is I'm just uh, putting some points on my letters. Now I'm not going to do the whole thing because I'm pretty much done here. This is sort of an optional step, but you can uh, also come in and draw on top and kind of make it look like these are differently constructed letters than just, you know, simple strokes. Like they have, um, they have a little more oomph to them this way. I'm gonna make this brush, I'm gonna eyeball and make it about as big as that line. And I'm gonna click once, and I'm using the mouse, so you can, I think you can use the tablet for this. You click once, so there is a dot there. Hold shift, and then come down here, and click again, and it will make a nice straight line for you. Uh, again, this is just sort of an optional thing to jazz up your letters. It's not at all necessary, but I figure if Somebody out there is going to be liking this. Now there is a way to do this with the letters layer itself. So I'm going to turn off the corrections we just made. If you wanted to, and I don't really recommend this unless you make a copy of this sound effect because I like to keep my sound, I like to keep the original sound effect file like very nice <laughs> and and not all mangled up so but if you wanted to you can come back to your uh sound effects layer that has all the styles and effects applied to it and you can just simply uh let me set my eraser to a pencil you can come in here and erase these away and what this does is it reflects the um style choices that we made. So you can see like the places where we erase, it tries to mold the inner and outer glows. This is an easier way to do this. And to be honest, I probably would do it like this. But um, if you're a little nervous about the integrity of the original sound effect, I would make a copy of it and just keep it in a folder. I like to make a folder while I'm working and call it keeps. And keeps are like art that I don't want messed with just in case I have to go back and reference it or something like that. So it's, sometimes it's like pieces of line art or sound effects or whatever. So I would like throw that in keeps. So it's just one little handy tool. Now if you want letters to overlap, you're going to have to get a little more creative because this simply just won't. If, if you like, for example, select the B and you're like, oh, I want the B to overlap the W. See how it just kind of like molds in? Yeah, it's not going to work, especially with all these effects applied. So again, I would recommend making a copy of this and then simply uh, select 
this uh, letter or whichever letter you want to be on top. Uh, make sure the lasso tool is selected afterwards or the wand tool. Yeah, the wand tool is fine. So make sure your wand tool is selected and then right click on top of the selected area and say layer via cut. So what that does is it cuts the B out but leaves the effects and puts it on a new layer. So now you can overlap it appropriately or you know you put the B behind there or whatever. <laughs> whatever. So that's how you do that. You can see it accidentally left the tip off because I erased. See, this is why you don't want to mess with the original too much. So that is pretty much going to do it. That's how I do my sound effects. Um, so once I'm, you know, happy with how it all looks and I've got it all painted up all nice and pretty like, I like to... Uh, so I'm just going to turn on this layer as an example. I like to select everything that made my sound effect and hit Control E. And there you go. There's your sound effect all complete. You can put it in your file. Just be aware that this is basically a piece of art. It's not a vector or something that is adjustable in the same way that like a vector, like if you were using Illustrator to do this, it wouldn't be the same. So just remember that it is like a piece of art. It's not something that you can change or type, you know, to fix letters or what have you. You can see I can just pull off pieces because it is a drawing at the end of the day. So, uh, you know, this is the artistic way to do sound effects and put them in your files. Uh, and it's essentially how I do all my sound effects. Let me find a nice couple of examples here. I do have a bad habit of getting a little crazy with my sound effects, and sometimes people say they look a little bit like graffiti. So maybe I need to just reel it back a little bit. So there's a nice thud sound effect using a lot of the same techniques I just went over. Here is a pillow sound effect, which is bop. And here I used more curvy, uh, rounder, softer lines, along with some little marks that I guess are like feathers, you know. Uh, this same sort of technique could be used for like bubbles or whatever, you know, like pop kind of sound effects. I also put a little bit of a texture in there that's angled uh, lines in the same way that the pillow is directionally coming from, just to help with the movement. So yeah, I have, uh, I use this technique a lot um, for my sound effects. See if I can find any other good examples here. This is a zap that has been kind of like a reoccurring thing, but you can see here that it has some, uh, I don't know what you call these, like electrical marks, like little lines to help indicate sort of the zappiness of it. Uh, same thing here, just little S's which is like a sizzle sound effect that I kind of faded off on each end. So yeah, you can get pretty creative. I like to uh, incorporate sound effects into the devices that they come from. So for example, yeah, there's like actually a lot of good examples of that, but I'll just pick one here. This is an example of a sound effect that is part of the actual thing that is happening. So there's like a laser beam and I made the Z into the laser and then put the A and the P after it. So it's sort of like, uh, it's within it, you know, it's, uh, you probably can't do that for everything, but you could do it for a lot of different things. I would think bubbles again. I don't know why I keep coming back to bubbles, but I think bubbles would work. So yeah. I kind of have some rules about my sound effects within my lore, so certain things can only be represented certain ways, like things related to telepathy and and uh, technology are always done in this sort of like teal and blue and white. So I would never use that color scheme for, say, their footsteps or the ripping of his jacket or the sound of him jumping with his coat flapping in the wind. You know, I would never use the teal, the white, or the blue for that kind of a sound effect. So... Yeah, you'll find uh, ways to establish your own sort of lore uh, with your sound effects. So, yeah, you'll get the hang of it. 
So yeah, that is going to do it for this tutorial. I hope it wasn't too long-winded, and I hope you get kind of the idea of it. And uh, yeah, I'm going to finish up the sound effect and put it in my comic, and I will see you guys later. Bye!